Thanks. Thanks for having me. Uh, thanks, Aruna, for inviting me. So it's a great pleasure to be here. Uh, so today I want to tell you about the research that I'm doing. Uh, so I'm part, sorry, I should introduce myself. So I'm a senior lecturer in computational aided engineering. Uh, I'm in, with the Dyson School of Design Engineering. So I joined Imperial uh, in Jan 2019. Um, and this is basically the topic of my research. So I work on uh, flexibility and systems design. So I'll speak about this a little bit more, but uh, the focus of my future work or what I'm currently working on is really developing a data-driven approach to this, in which case Daphne makes uh, perfect sense. So the focus of my research is to help design systems, engineering systems that uh, are better suited to deal with uncertainty by exploiting this idea of flexibility as a way to de uh, design systems that are more adaptable, evolvable, reconfigurable uh, to help deal with uncertainty and risk. Um, and I look into it as a way to enable better sustainability and resilience in systems and infrastructures in particular. So I've worked in application like transportation, energy systems, and more recently I'm involved in space systems, but uh, infrastructures have always been uh, one of the major topic um, in my research. So um, just to give you an idea of what flexibility is, so um, it's been formally defined or where I come from is from a definition that comes from the real options literature. Some of you might be familiar with it. It's a concept that's been developed uh, by economists and finance to quantify the value of flexibility. Um, but why this is important from a systems design standpoint is that we can actually embed some ideas, some strategies to make systems more adaptable and flexible as a way to help improve their expected performance, sustainability, resilience. So here I'm just giving you a quick example of a flexibility strategy I've worked on um, when I was in Singapore uh, on waste to energy systems. So basically transforming waste into all sorts of um, fuels and um, energy sources. Uh, so you can imagine that you have your baseline system, so you design it in a particular way to accommodate a certain capacity, uh, but you could also design it so it can uh, expand the production capacity more easily, so that you buy a piece of land, for example, uh, and then you start planning for shared infrastructure and this possible increase in the future, but you don't necessarily do it right away. And then at some point when you reach a certain threshold of demand, then you build in this additional capacity. And the benefit of doing that is that it reduces your risk to uh, your down, your exposure to downside risk because you didn't have to put as much money. Um, also makes better use of financial and material resources, but also helps you capitalize on upside opportunities. So this is what, in a nutshell, flexibility helps you to do. It helps manage the risk um, at the infrastructure levels. And there are many generic strategies. Some of those are listed here on the left. What's uh, interesting or important is that you need to design this flexibility ahead of time. You can't just wake up one morning and say, oh, I want to do this. You need to plan for it uh, early on. And, and why this is important, and I think this is in the spirit of the Daphne initiative, is that the engineering discipline as a whole is becoming increasingly complex. And we need to be a, a lot more careful about including these socio-technical aspects. So uncertainty affecting life cycle performance, um, and flexibility is, is clearly a way to deal with these uncertainties um, by protecting from downsides, positioning for upsides with the net effect of improving the expected performance. Um, so this is the work I do. I basically develop design methods, test them, evaluate them. So including optimization, stochastic simulation methods, and now more recently machine learning techniques to help do that in the way that we think about designing systems and infrastructures. And, here you have a graphical representation of what flexibility does. If you think about a distribution of potential outcome, it really trying to push the distribution towards better value as a whole. And, and really part of the motivation is that there's been many cases in the past where systems have been designed without flexibility and, and despite them functioning perfectly from a technological standpoint, they failed uh, from other aspects, most, most of them uh, from an economic standpoint. Um, so this is the motivation for my work. Um, now, uh, like I said, I've worked a lot in um, developing techniques that borrow, take a systems approach, but borrow from methods like uh, stochastic optimization, robust optimization, simulation. Um, and more recently, uh, I've been 
focused on the idea that really data analytics and machine learning can help um, develop that theory to uh, design systems um, even more, push it even further. So some example research I've done recently is develop what I call a decision rule based approach to real options analysis. So in, in some ways you could say that my research aims to adapt that theory and make it more practical in an engineering design setting. And so the way that I deal with these problems is basically by formulating it in a way that the, 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 the timing for deciding when it's a good time to reconfigure the system is very intuitive. So you model it as an if then else statement. So if the waste amount reaches a certain level, then we will expand capacity. Otherwise we don't do anything, but you can treat these variables, both physical and decision rule variables uh, that, and you can optimize them from a stochastic standpoint. Um, <clears throat> and what that does is that it helps combine or marry, if you will, the physical design elements with the managerial aspects of the system. So that's one benefit. And we've worked uh, in a number of application areas. So that's one example where we apply to um, waste, uh, waste to energy uh, in Singapore, where the National Environment Agency was interested in a model that would help them determine where and when they should put different types uh, or technologies uh, for these waste to energy uh, converters um, over time and space or so optimize it, but looking into these ideas of adapting to the waste generation patterns. And that's one example here of intuitive decision rule is if the food waste amount in a given region reaches a certain level, then you expand, otherwise you don't do anything. Um, so that's one method that's driving a lot of the research that I'm doing and, and now looking into these future directions of um, this particular decision rule formulation, the benefit is that um, it really lends itself well. So if you buy that idea, as opposed to the standard real options methods, if you buy into that idea, then I, uh, methods like deep reinforcement learning make uh, a lot of sense or using uh, AI ML techniques to make better predictions and simulations. So there's a lot of, of applications um, in, in my field. Um, and in particular, one thing I'm really interested in is, is seeing as the, these methods can help us think differently about the design of future cities, in which case, then again, being involved with Daphne makes, uh, makes a lot of sense. So yeah, here, I just wanna give you some intuition um, onto this idea of how methods like reinforcement learning could be used. So if you buy that idea of if then else statement, usually it's the designers through experience, through human creativity, through um, generic strategies that says, okay, I'll look into the value or quantify the value of this particular strategy. And then you decide what are the rules, what is the policy? But what if we could let the system learn from the data, what are the best adaptation or reconfiguration policies? So that's one thing that um, I think could be interesting uh, in terms of computational data-driven real options development um, that could be enabled by the Daphne initiative. Uh, so here, that's an example I was working on uh, before I left Singapore. So over there, the problem is that they wanna reduce ambient heat as opposed to increasing it. Um, and so the one question is how do we deploy design like greeneries, um, rooftop uh, PV systems, um, energy storage facilities over time and space to accommodate that. So you could imagine this uncertainty fluctuating anthropogenic heat threshold. And when it reaches different levels then the system reconfigures and learn to reconfigure over time, right? So we would need a lot of data diverse, but also in terms of quantity to be able to train a system to do that. So that's one um, idea that I'm currently working on. Um, and also simulation games. So basically taking an empirical approach to help uh, designers and decision makers um, better incorporate these ideas in their thinking. And so using this kind of platform to test different um, teaching methods, um, so it's a game basically where you can help teach some of these uh, approaches and lessons and decision rule uh, methods. 
um, and see how well people do. So here we devised a game where, um, where the designers need to think about the deployment of an energy system involving uh, base load and renewable, for instance, and helping us study these ideas of decision rule, flexibility thinking. And then another really important part of, of my research is um, developing this data-driven decision support system, which I think I've seen a lot of similar ideas being developed right now in the Daphne interface. I'm really glad to see that. Um, <clears throat> but it's really, um, it's a way to communicate and embed the underlying optimization and algorithms that we deploy to really make, uh, help the users make best use of it and really support the decision-making process. So here, that's an example uh, system that was developed working with uh, NEA back in Singapore um, about the, that model that I was just talking about. And the system was an integration of data visualization capability. So the top left quadrant, um, then you could specify the parameters for the optimization. So deploying the waste to energy capacity across the city um, then visualize over time and space the optimization outcome. And then one output that was more for show, but it's, it's a 3D virtual navigation part. So you could actually see and feel what the city would look like with the different solutions. And, and as an extension to these ideas, now I'm working on, on uh, seeing how to integrate virtual reality into these, these kinds of design thinking and methods. So, um, so that's, my, that's my 10 minutes. That's my presentation. I don't know. How far it went above time, but yeah. Anyway, glad to uh, glad to contribute.